Let's see it played. The Marshalls Volume 1, Uno and Sult in Portugal. This is the Uno 1808 scenario. It is the 17th of August. Second turn of the campaign. It's the French operation. Um, I have a, I have an event marker to review. Um, <clears throat> then I'll take a look at the situation and consider some French options. So this is the French event marker drawn for this turn. Okay, this is the uncontrolled uh, charge. It's a French event marker uh, used for both the 1808 and 1809 scenarios. This is played during phase C operations before the allocation of losses due to a melee. If the Anglo Allied stack contains at least one British cavalry unit, not the Portuguese cavalry, the first loss suffered must be a British cavalry unit as a replacement for the head or lead unit. Okay, so that is the French event marker and uh, the French should be looking uh, to use that during battle to eliminate the British cavalry unit. On the topic of event counters, uh, just to review, uh, the French side still has the Kellerman event uh, marker which basically allows the French to create a a uh, it's only a two-step unit but it's a high morale uh, cavalry unit under Kellerman okay review uh, friendly forces down here in Lisbon uh, I've got the two garrison units with uh, three morale and one step units. Um, actually, okay. I'm going to review the garrison rule. Um, 7.3 under special cases at the beginning or end, sick. <laughs> at the beginning or end of a movement in a town zone free of enemy units, a player can create a garrison from an infantry unit based on the available counters. Okay. The infantry unit loses one strength step and the garrison counter is placed in the zone. I think I've been playing this wrong and I'll take care of that right now. I tried it anyways. Um, garrisons are immobile. That explains why they don't have a movement uh, allowance on them um, and cannot leave the zone in which they were created in the same manner any infantry unit can recover a garrison by erasing a loss of one strength step a unit with no losses cannot recover a garrison the colored value indicates the morale of the garrison so that's morale three which is below average uh, if the garrison suffers a loss, it is eliminated. The garrison can be designated as the lead unit, head unit. A garrison cannot leave the zone it occupies. It, if it must retreat following combat, it is eliminated. So, so in the so the starting setup for the French in this scenario shows two garrison units. I think I did that wrong. I think it's just two garrison. I'm going to assume that I did this wrong. It's not entirely clear, but I'm assuming that the two garrison units are available to the French side. I'm going to play it this way anyway, so I need to correct something. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one garrison unit in Lisbon. I'm going to take the other garrison... Wait, wait. I just noticed the garrison units are okay the garrison units are shown set up in Lisbon so I'm gonna back up I'm gonna back up okay 
it I don't think this is entirely clear all right I'm gonna back up to what I did before it shows two garrison units in Lisbon and that's it it doesn't say that I've already paid in steps from another unit that starts there it says nothing about that so okay scratch what I said I I guess I will go with the idea that the two garrison units were there. I don't think that hmm, doesn't sound entirely correct. Because why the garrison rule talks about creating and recovering garrisons. So if I start with two garrison units in Lisbon and it doesn't tell me that these steps are supposed to be taken from the infantry units that start there, then, hmm. Yeah, I think that's a little unclear. But I'll just leave the garrison units there for this game. And maybe in future plays I can straighten that out. Okay, two garrison units in Lisbon. Um, here in the center location, we've got the baggage trains, uh, Charlot infantry, and uh, artillery. There. In Vimero, what I do not remember. See, I don't remember a lot of this stuff, which is good. I got Delaborde's infantry and Chasseurs. Okay. In Torres Vedras, we've got, ah, oh, that's you know, and you know has an artillery, uh, horse artillery. And, oh, and uh, Dragoons. But no infantry, that's all he's got. Dragoons, horse artillery, and regular artillery. Okay. Okay, and then to the east of Torres Vedras. Oh, okay. We've got the two decoys. And Loison. Loison has with him a dragoon unit of uh, four morale. There. Okay. And finally, in the mountain defensive area, we've got a mixed force Loison infantry, some. Dragoons and uh, some artillery. Okay, so mixed force there. Okay, so uh, so well, this well, first of all, this unit Loison here isn't doing anything isn't doing enough right here. So a possibility is moving uh, him. But he just has cavalry with him. That's it. Hmm. Um, hmm. Already it seems like the French don't have enough infantry. Um... Back to the French question of when to pull out of this area and pull back south. Maybe not this, well, maybe not this operation. Um, um, you know could send artillery to Vimero. He has horse artillery and regular artillery with him. Um, <clears throat> Charlot could move up and join you know. Um, and then what to do with Loison and his cavalry? Does 
Does the French side take an opportunity to stab north again one more time? At least, or yeah, one one more time. Loison could march two, three, four. Which would put them in a position. Well, at the very least, it would put them in the rear. Oh, uh, in the rear of the, of the Anglo Allied force. Actually, now that I think about it, actually, now that I think about it, um, the French need to need to seriously consider bringing battle this turn. Um, so actually, hmm. Okay, I was reviewing the uh, combat modifiers. If I move, for example, if I move this force up by the road and the trail to Peniche, cutting off the line of communications back to the British fleet doesn't seem to do anything for combat. It, that seems to only influence the fatigue um, mechanic during marches. However, if I can block lines of retreat. So I guess that means if I could get, which I think I can, it's going to be hard to get to that one though. Uh, anyways, if I can, if I can block all lines of retreat, there is a sizable penalty in combat. Hmm. Wonder if I could race a cavalry unit there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the very limit. It's the very limit. Well actually it would be a would be a chance and the French the French need to get aggressive. In any case, Lazon can move two, three, four, five, six. Lazon could try to get to here and the mountain force could try to get here. It's kind of a stretch though. Hmm. But uh, shortage of infantry, of all things. Shortage of infantry. Okay. Got different options. And I wonder if uh, I wonder if the French don't sacrifice another victory point and forego combat this turn. Um, maybe try to bank on an event marker. Maybe. Well, yeah. No, that's that's possible. I think there is at least one event marker that could at least put pressure on the Anglo out. Could right now the pressure seems to be on the French. French want to push that pressure to the Anglo Allied side. Um, there are some adjustments to be made here, but really we got to employ Loison's force, and we need to. This is doing something over here but it'd be better to use that force um, for an even better purpose. Okay. Okay. Um, um, this is going to be interesting. <clears throat> All right, let's see how far. 
So as I understand it, uh, if I just take the or if I just take the cavalry here, the dragoons. Oh wait a minute, the infant. Oh, the infantry. Okay. Okay. So I see something. Okay, this is an interesting design feature anyways. Infantry, artillery, or <laughs> infantry, cavalry. It's early morning. Both have movement allowance of nine. As you try to push the force in a march and, you, and, you're, drawing, and you're drawing those fatigue markers <clears throat> randomly, the moment you exceed, the moment that the that fatigue exceeds a unit's morale, not steps, not steps, but morale, the unit must stop. And on top of that, any infantry unit, I think it's any infantry units, also take a step loss. Um, that means that pushing the cavalry will just be some type of limit, short, uh, possibly short of nine. Where's the infant? Yeah. So, so the infantry stops and takes a step loss. But I think that step loss is recoverable. So I think it's, I think it's worth it. Ooh, Loison's infantry here, by the way, is the strongest infantry unit in the French force here. It has six steps and a morale of four. I think... I think it is the, the time to one, two, three. Um, so I see these aren't really comparable. Using cavalry isn't really comparable to using infantry. I'm going to experiment with sending the cavalry alone and try to get around the Anglo Allied rear into the Anglo Allied rear area. And for this for this experiment, I'm gonna um, leave the infantry behind and do something else with with them. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Alright. Let's try the cavalry first. Oh Actually, we'll go all the way through. It'll be a command test first. I just noticed another dynamic. I'm free as the French side <clears throat> to make all my moves how I want to. Primarily because the Anglo Allied force moved in its entirety, which is interesting. Um. I'll want to look at that again later, the dynamics of that, but they're done. So I can make my moves, basically, uh, I can take my time and make the moves that I want. So the idea is, is to send the Dragoons around here and try to get... You know what? Okay, I'll try, but... Um, hmm. Give me one, two, three, four, five. Six. That is so unlikely. I want to get to here, and chances are I'll get to here or here. Which is, which is two or three short of my of my destination. And if I don't get to here, then it doesn't really do much. See, I don't think that, yeah, scratch that. I don't think the British Anglo Allied Army here can easily be cut off. So 
All right, that's unfortunate. That's too, that's too risky. That's just too risky. So we'll go back to, we know we want to use Loison's force. He only has dragoons and the two decoys. So let's at least try to put him on Hmm. Okay, thinking it's more important that the French set themselves up for the possibility of a major battle than it is to get forces into the Anglo-Allied rear. So it's more important that I set up that I set up forces in this area. So that's that priority. Second, I think now looking from the French perspective, I think that it helps that the Anglo Allied army is consolidated here and that the French should not divide any more than they already have. As a matter of fact, they should be looking to consolidate to some degree. So that's what I'm going to do. So the question is, where to set where to set up what um so you know needs <clears throat> you know needs infantry Charlot down here is only two steps. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Actually, you know. Oh, yeah. You know can take his force here. Then he gets his infantry. That's Delaborde. Loison comes here and tries to get his infantry to him. And then we keep at least one force in depth here. Okay. That's what it is. So we'll start with, let's see in what order we'll move Loison here. And he's got dragoons with him. Okay. Loison will move here as a first operation. Okay, Loison's uh, march along the trail there to Torres Vedras draws a fatigue two marker. Eight, the presence of a commander allows you to put one back into the cup. And so Loison and the two uh, decoys with his dragoons are, and I'm gonna rotate them, yeah. Rotate them, show they're done. They're in Torres Vedras. That, you know, with his dragoons and artillery, are marching. Um, oh no. Now I'll see if this force can get. Can get. Uh, Okay, I think this force is going to try to get up there to reinforce Law Zone because that's along the road. It's an easier option. And then this force will start to come down to be the defense in depth. I think that's what I have to do. This force will have to pass a command test, uh, however. I rolled a 1d6 for the command test, which is 3. I'm adding 1 because the commander in chief, you know, has a line of communications to the force. Um, so for a modified four, that still means that the force only has half of its movement allowance. 
So the slowest force will be, not including the baggage trains, will be the artillery. So the force is going to go down to two moving points, which is okay because they're moving along the road. So they're going to move, so they are going to move here and they're going to draw, draw a fatigue. They draw a, okay, fatigue zero. And then they're going to march one more to Torres Vedras. Going to draw another fatigue marker, fatigue one. Um, so they have not accumulated enough fatigue to cause Charlot to either stop the force, right, stop the force or cause Charlot. The baggage train would allow us to, to put back one anyways. But okay, so they make it to. <clears throat> they make it to uh, Torres Vedras and actually I guess they can hmm, how do I do that well I'll leave them there for now then um, okay now Loison has his combined arms force now you know we'll march this way it's it's okay this is the commander chief don't need to roll a command test it's one march they would draw one they would draw one fatigue a marker but the commander chief gets to put it back anyways so you know is now here like that now this force will try to move they have to do a command test the Commander-in-Chief can still trace a line of communications to them. They're not all cavalry, and they don't have a commander with them. Okay, they roll a five. So, modified to six. They roll a five plus one because the line of communications back to the Commander-in-Chief is a six, which means that they can use their full movement allowance, which is good, but they're slowed by the presence of the artillery. So they're gonna go they go one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. Hmm. I'm actually gonna have them come down here. So they're gonna march one. Draw a fatigue marker. So one, okay. Uh, two, because they're, they're moving along the road there. They draw a, oh, <laughs> they draw a three. They're not able to put any back. <sighs> um, okay. Loison's, um, Loison's uh, morale is four. The cavalry is four. Um, I could push it again, of course, but, to, but okay, so they, they don't, let's see, they don't have to stop because the fatigue equals the morale of the forces. I could push again. You can always draw a fatigue zero. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, now that I've drawn the fatigue three, and I think there's only one fatigue three in the mix, um, it's actually, okay, so if I, if I push on one more, and draw zero, no problem. If I draw one or two, then the force has to stop here anyways, which is where I was trying to get to anyways. And Loison would take a step loss. That step loss should be recoverable. So it's not like it's a disaster. The question is how important is it to get to this particular spot? I don't think it's important enough to push it. So I'll stop here. Stop here, invert them. Okay, I think that's it. So now I'll just clean up my forces. This is what I look like at the end. These three forces inverted because they've activated. This isn't necessarily ideal, but this was good that I have fairly strong combined arms forces in both of these locations. Um, <clears throat> now we're gonna go on. To, French are not gonna do any more. 
going to go on to the administration uh, administrative phase. So we're going to remove any backs to the river and have combated markers. We're going to test for recuperation or recovery. Non-activated, non-demoralized units with no enemy stack in the zone. Okay, and then test for rallying. I don't need to do that. So we are going to test for recovery or recuperation because Delaborde, Delaborde is with you know here. Right there is Delaborde. Delaborde has a step loss. Um, so we're going to try to recover that. Okay, this is important. Delaborde would have to have not activated this turn. Uh, and I don't think he did. I think he was already in Vimero. Unfortunately, I can't remember exactly, but I think he was. <laughs> I think he was already there. Yeah, yeah, I think he was already there. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to roll, and I'm going to try to get equal to or less than his morale. Oh, yeah. So his current morale is 4, he rolled a 2. So uh, Delaborde recovered his lost step, so now the French are back up to full strength. Um, now the last step is... Um, so the last step is I'm going to put the forces back up right, make them available. I am going to go ahead and... Uh, Give the Anglo allies one more VP. They now have two. Uh, but the French still have six for holding Lisbon. Um, um, oh, Anglo allied army as well. And then we move on to the 18th of August. And that should be everything for this turn. The 17th of finish, uh, finish with the 17th of August.